that done. It's finished. This is the last roll of the dice, but everyone knows it's going to fail. That was the damning verdict from a senior Hollywood studio executive within minutes of the mortifyingly embarrassing announcement that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's £100 million Netflix deal had culminated in the production of two low-grade and reductive reality TV series branded utter rubbish. It took 1,000 319 days from the mega money agreement being announced for the pair to announce via their production company, Archwell, one, a series curated by Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, that will celebrate the joys of cooking and gardening, entertaining and friendship. And two, a polo reality series for the Duke, shot primarily at the US Open Polo Championship in Wellington, Florida, that will provide viewers with unprecedented access to the world of professional polo. Now, firstly, curated by Megan? What the hell does that even mean? How do you curate a TV series? You either create a TV series, develop it, make it, or star in it. You can't curated. But as ever, Megan's minions have had to reinvent language in order to satisfy her gigantic ego but distinct lack of delivery. Secondly, though, is that it? Really? That's it? After tens of millions spent on development with the phalanx of entertainment brains across the world's biggest streamer and Hollywood's top entertainment agency Endeavor, that's the best you could come up with? Conceited Megan, inviting her conceited mates who are all terrified of her, by the way, because of a tradition of ghosting anyone who dares pose any sort of challenge to her, around her 16 Lou mansion to eat rich people's Californian food? Did they not learn that Megan's ultra out of touch conversations with her privileged and woke A list friends were a total disaster on her Spotify flop archetypes? People should expect the real me in this, and probably the me that they've never gotten to know. Certainly not in the past few years, um, where everything is through the lens of the media, as opposed to, hey, it's me. I'm just excited to be myself and talk and be unfiltered and... Yeah, it's fun. Let's be honest, unless Megan was inviting Trevor Engelson, Samantha Markle and Prince William around for a cosy quinoa salad under that heart-shaped palm tree in Montecito, no one outside the Sussex squad is going to stomach such self-indulgent nonsense for anything other than hate-watching. As for hair-brained Harry, Polo? The most upper-crust, inaccessible sport in the world? That's your big TV idea? To change the world? Netflix cameras were there to follow Harry and Meghan at last weekend's event, but far unlikely to show this awkward moment when the self-styled Duchess rudely snapped at a woman for standing in the wrong place during a photo call. Now remember, I didn't set the lofty standards of this Netflix deal. The deluded duo and their corporate paymasters very clearly did. So when it was announced, Harry and Meghan opined in a carefully crafted and boastful press release, our lives both independent of each other and as a couple, have allowed us to understand the power of the human spirit, of courage, resilience, and the need for connection through our work with diverse communities and their environments to shine a light on people and causes around the world. Our focus will be on creating content that informs, but also gives hope. As new parents, making inspirational family program is also important to us, as is powerful storytelling through a truthful and relatable lens. But after Harry's Invictus Games series and a documentary called Live to Lead, using old interviews with woke public figures like Jacinda Ardern, who you probably remember awkwardly distanced herself from the couple because of her alliance with Prince William, after they both bombed, missing the all-important Netflix top 10 in the UK and the US, the only content that has received any traction was their trashy reality show spreading lies and hatred about the royal family and the Commonwealth, which we must never forget was the late Queen's work. The pain and suffering of women marrying into this institution, this feeding frenzy, 
I realized they're never going to protect you. I was terrified. I didn't want history to repeat itself. Netflix co-chief executive Ted Sarandos, who's pictured here with Meghan and his wife at a Beyonce concert recently, well, he's significantly moved the goalposts too when he announced what the New York Times described as a megawatt deal, he gushed, Harry and Meghan have inspired millions of people all around the world with their authenticity, optimism, and leadership. We're incredibly proud they have chosen Netflix as their creative home and are excited about telling stories with them that can help build resilience and increase understanding for audiences everywhere. But just last month, the Netflix boss heaped praise on Barack and Michelle Obama, saying he was very happy with their relationship while being far more circumspect about what's going on with Harry and Meghan. He said this, They're controversial, but that's usually a good thing. You may love them or hate them, but you're watching. And I do think that they are also going to be very strong storytellers with great exposure to media in terms of what people want to talk about, what they think about, and they're great at getting attention. Translation. They get some okay numbers because most people can't stand them. They're my friends, so I'm going to support them until they finally make something decent. I mean, it's hardly a ringing endorsement of the inspiring change makers we were promised in 2020. Now, even though the Sussexes purchased the film rights to the best-selling novel Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune, it's obvious this wasn't the outcome that either party had envisaged. Not only have there been absolutely no inspiring or world-changing examples of content, there's been no critical acclaim either. Zero Emmy nominations, certainly no Oscars, and not even a hint at a consolation prize of the Golden Globes. I've been investigating for some time why Netflix has been prepared to persevere with this nightmare when Spotify were happy to so brutally cut the difficult couple loose. And what I've discovered is that, as is so often the case in Hollywood, personal relationships and celebrity culture appear to have been the key difference. Meghan's new agent, Ari Emanuel at Endeavour, he in particular has done his best to get the Netflix deal back on the road, relying on the couple's connection with Sarandos. Another senior executive source explained to me, Ted is their friend. That's the only thing keeping them in business. Even though they're significantly tightening their budgets, Netflix has the money to keep the faith and save face, and Ted can single-handedly make these decisions. Whereas everyone at Spotify hated them both. It's fundamentally still a European company that doesn't have time for their costly antics. And trust me, that source wasn't exaggerating because this is what a senior source at Spotify told me. <laughs> it is absolutely true to say that Harry and Meghan were hated within the company. All of our dealings with them were trying and tedious and the content was terrible. They were lazy and entitled. The distinct lack of ideas from the couple stunned those involved in their creative discussions. I mean, who can forget what Bill Simmons, Spotify's head of podcast innovation and monetization, had to say? I'm going to pose this question to you. You, you do a lot of business deals, a lot of negotiations. I do? Well, let, let's just I pretend. wish I'd been involved in the Megan and Harry leave Spotify negotiation. <laughs> the f***ing <laughs> grifters. That's the podcast we should have launched with them. Oh, yeah. Um, I got to get drunk one night and tell the story of the Zoom I had with Harry to try to help him with a podcast idea. Do it. It's one of my best stories. Do it. Oh, what I wouldn't do to hear the full story from Bill Simmons. <laughs> one day, I hope that will come out. Uh, when Harry and Meghan, or their ever-changing team, because let's be honest, most Archwell executives last barely a year in post. But when they do have an idea, it's usually executed terribly. Megan's only scripted development, a TV series about a woke little girl called Pearl, was axed by Netflix before any filming ever began. It's now also clear that Harry and Megan's much heralded Archwell is effectively a vanity vehicle and will do none of the heavy lifting producing either of the new series. The Intellectual Property Corporation, which is part of the studio giant Sony Pictures, will take the lead on making Megan's cooking bore fest somehow palatable, while 
boardwalk pictures as producing the Polo series. I think the failure of the Sussexes pack, though, is part of a wider narrative in Hollywood, too, about the end of mega-money ego deals with Will and Jada Pinkett Smith's company, Westbrook particularly, struggling, too. Netflix and Archibald never publicly release the terms of their deal, which is telling, so we don't know the length of any exclusivity window. That gives some leeway for a face-saving act two on significantly reduced terms, and that is probably now the best option for Harry and Meghan, because Disney and Apple were potentially interested in a deal back in 2020, but now their executives would only ever consider individual project pitches given the very public Netflix failure. And given the couple's creative deficit, outright laziness, reductive final products, and slumping popularity on both sides of the Atlantic, I believe the Sussex's Hollywood dream has now turned into a night terror. I want to leave you uh, with the summation of another senior Hollywood executive who said this. Harry and Meghan are now the opposite of Blockbuster. They can be a drag on a brand, and they're simply no longer worth the money and effort. They have been given multiple chances to create a hit on any platform, on any topic, and it just hasn't happened. Megan's best bet would be going back to the reboot of Suits. And if you want more of this content from Dan Wooten Outspoken, please hit the subscribe button right now. And if you want to be part of our members town hall with royal experts like Lady Colin Campbell, where you can ask her the questions, then visit right now www.danwootenoutspoken.com and make sure you subscribe.